Hey guys, we're Fairground Saints. I'm Mason. I'm Megan. I'm Elijah. And we're hanging out with Rob on Front Row Live. What's it like going from like a residency down the street at the Hotel Cafe to like playing a venue like this or even like touring in general? Um, it's kind of, I, it's fun. I would say it's really exciting. Uh, and it's, it's not like incredibly different. It's mm. more similar than you'd expect. Really? Because you're just yeah. playing for more people and it, people are people. You know what I mean? But it's uh. It's definitely another level of like, there's a bigger room. It's like, there's a little more excitement in the air, I would say, probably. And this is a stage that, you know, we've seen some of our favorite bands play on. Yeah, so. right. I know for me, I've, I saw Tori Kelly here, and it was really awesome. So right. just to be playing on the same stage is, is kind of sweet. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. And, and I mean, you're on tour with Tori Kelly's, uh, what is it, management partner? Management. Yeah, there you go, <laughs> management. So what, what's it been like so far on the Carly Rae Jepsen tour? It's been awesome. It's it's definitely a pop tour. Um, I've never I've never seen crowds like that. They're very passionate about a Carly, and it's really it's cool to see people that come out and love what she does so much. And right. it's to just kind of dip our fingers in that a little bit and be able to reach out to them. And they're pretty stoked on our music too. Like nice. we've gotten a good uh, response, and it's really it's cool. You know, it's been fun. Now, you guys are. Would you guys say you're more folky, or are you guys uh, in between folky pop? What would you really say? Because it's really kind of hard to like narrow it down when you're actually listening to the music. I think it hits all aspects almost. I love when people say that because it's. I think that's kind of the goal of, of making music is to not kind of pigeonhole yourself into one genre. You right. know, we don't really want to be pop or country or folk. It's just um, we just love writing songs. And I think the more that you love writing songs and the more that of your heart that you put into it, um, it just ends up being more you, you know, as opposed to more something else. Right. Mm. Yeah. So when writing songs, for example, the debut album, which dropped uh, August, mm -hmm. yeah. um, and you guys have been promoting that right now, I uh, hear it's going pretty good. So yeah. coming into the studio, recording that, uh, and then working with Matthew, I want to say it was, that you guys produced it with, yes, yes, uh, what was that like for you guys, especially as a trio? Um, it was <laughs> we kind of take turns. What, what was it like, Mason? <laughs> what was it like, Mason? Um, like three. <laughs> it was uh, it was amazing. It was really cool. It, it's super. It was a Mason. It was a Mason. It was a Mason. Uh, Mason. Um, no, it was it was really really cool to be able to um, you know, when you start writing music, the the one thing that you really the very first thing that's on your mind is to uh put out a record, you know, whatever that means. And um, we were just fortunate enough to be able to do it in an incredibly professional environment and to create something I think that went well above and beyond what we had dreamed of initially. So uh, really fantastic. And yeah. when, when working on this record, where did you guys actually produce it? Or where did you guys record it at? Uh, was it here in LA uh, locally? Or did you guys go to various places like other artists? We went to two locations. We went to Sunset Studios, okay. um, or East West Studios. It was on Sunset. Um, and then we recorded like the vocals and like some of the like acoustic guitars at Matthew's actual house. Okay. So it was, yeah. The, the whole heart of the album was in Malibu um, mm -hmm. at Matthew's studio. Nice. So why did you guys choose the studio that you did? And I mean, obviously Matthew's house because he's helping you guys out. But the studio itself, what was it about that studio that you guys wanted to record there? Uh, I think the truth is we didn't really, we were complete amateurs before we came into this. We just loved writing songs. And so we kind of left those decisions up to our producer. But I think um, just after being in there for a little bit of time, it seems like everybody and anybody who's a real very serious professional wants to record it at east west studios and the result was fantastic so we were happy with that yeah we had no problems with the, with the studio <laughs> you know it wasn't like we walked in and we were like oh wait that's not gonna work right, yeah. you know it's like oh that's a room where frank sinatra recorded it and i right. think we're, we'll be okay here you know <laughs> it's just it's just interesting because especially being here in la you have so many options so how do you really like actually narrow it down to that one studio that you're going to record? Because I'm sure, like you said, Frank Sinatra yeah. recorded here, Michael Jackson there, you know, like yeah. you never know who recorded where. Yeah, I think I think the truth is that if you listen to like a record, like records that Mac DeMarco is making, it doesn't sound fantastic, mm. you know, but people don't generally um, care about so much how clean it is unless they're like producers or something like that. I think people really love, again, the songs, and I yeah. think that's the most important part about it. Right. So, but again, no, nothing against <laughs> recording at East, East nope. West Studios. That was amazing. Very, yeah. very cool. And when releasing your, your debut album, you know, it's it's not easy to just release songs. So what is it about these specific songs that made it to the record that you guys wanted to get those out uh, as a first listen for a record? Uh, it was really, really hard to narrow it down because we had enough material for two albums. Um, but I think we just picked the songs that were 
a good introduction of who we are and the most honest and just the ones that we felt closest to, right. to, you know, just introduce ourselves to the world, essentially. Yeah. So. Were there specific songs on the record that you guys struggled with? Uh, maybe trashed them a couple times, rewrote them? Uh, yeah. said they weren't going to make it to the record and ended up making it? We, I think the thing that I really, really loved about Matthew Wilder was how hard he pushed us to, to be excellent in all different areas of what we were doing, like especially songwriting. You know, mm. it wasn't, it almost was never good enough, you know? And I, I do like that kind of pressure of like, okay, well, fine, I'm going to prove you wrong. I'm going to go in that barn for an hour and then finish these songs up and I'm going to blow your mind when I come back. And then you come back and you think you got it and you don't. And, you know, it's kind of like, writing songs the way Abraham Lincoln wrote letters, you know? There's just <laughs> so much focus on, on making it as fantastic as possible. And how did he really, like, break you guys down as artists? You mentioned earlier you guys were amateurs coming into the studio. So, I mean, what was the biggest struggle with him, um, with you guys, whether it was trying to find your sound or, you know, just trying to learn how to record as, as an artist? Um, I think uh, I think it's always difficult working with, because um, I think we all, all three of us have very strong personalities, mm -hmm. and um, we all had kind of this vision of our individual selves when we went into it, you know, like, I kind of wanted to sound like a Mason Van Valen record, I don't think Megan, you really wanted to sound like a Megan McAllister record, but I think me I and know. Eli, we, we kind of had this, this I, I definitely had a vision for it, and I think... Uh, had my vision been realized in my own hands, it wouldn't be Fairground Saints, you know? So um, that was the really cool thing about working with Matthew Wilder. And the hard thing as well, you know, is getting rid of your ego and just letting it be whatever it is, you know? Because it's hard to, it's hard, it's like somebody else listens to your song and they think something else, you know what I mean? And then you listen to it and you critique it. So it was cool to have this outside perspective yeah. mm -hmm. making us into, uh, or making the record into something I couldn't have realized by myself. Yeah, and I think that, I think we like felt like we weren't professionals or like we felt like we were amateurs, but I think like, like halfway down the down the pike, we were kind of like, oh, we can actually do this. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I could actually talk to a studio uh, player or session player and, and actually have a conversation with him, yeah. and he would understand what I was saying. And that was what I was like, oh, maybe maybe I'm okay at this, you know? <laughs> and, I mean, you you experienced a lot since the record dropped, since you guys even recorded the record. So how do you guys feel you grow you grew already as musicians and you know as songwriters as well? Uh, I guess it's just getting the response because we had no idea what to expect when we put that album out and to get the bounce back from that and mm. to get people's words and feedback, it teaches you a lot and it again gives you that outside perspective that you didn't have before and mm. you didn't know how people were going to react to it, but right. you do learn a lot about yourself and about the music and everything. Yeah, and I think um, definitely something that I've learned a lot about is performing. Mm. Um, I used to close my eyes through every single song that I ever you played did. and I had to work you on that did. really stage hard. Fright. No, stage fright, I just was so in the song, you know, and that was kind of how it was. I've never really been super scared to be on stage ever since I was little. I had a pretty easy time getting up there for whatever reason. It's yeah. kind of where I'm most comfortable, but um, definitely learning how to interact with an audience yeah. is hard is hard for me because you spend so much time writing these songs by right. yourself and then exactly. you go out yeah. there and perform them. So performing has gotten a lot a lot better since we very first started. Now, have you guys dealt with situations where you're trying to interact with the audience, but they're really not there? Not because your your music is not that great, but like just because they're there to see someone specific. Yeah. Yes. So how did you guys? <laughs> <laughs> the answer is yes. How did how did you guys really like deal with it? You just you kind of you have to accept that <laughs> that yeah. that all there's a lot of different demographics in the world, right? You have to right. accept that you're not gonna please everyone. And I think that if you try to, then you will literally go insane. Mm. And so I think that when you when you go up against an audience that doesn't really dig your sound, mm. it's almost reassuring because that that means that there has to be another audience that does. Right. You know what I mean? So we've definitely experienced that. But it's like yeah. I feel like we've experienced it enough now where we kind of are like, wow, that sucked. Let's do another show. Yeah. You know, like it, it depends on the show really. It, yeah. it brings us closer together as a band yeah. though yeah, because sure. we have to like me and Mason will just look at each other and be like, well, let's just do it. <laughs> yeah, let's a practice. Just, this is a good rehearsal. <laughs> right. um, yeah. But you know, it brings us closer and it's a memory that we have and. Not, it's not for everybody. Like it's just part of life. So. Right. Yeah. And I think a great way to deal with that for anybody who's you know trying to figure that out. You know, when you go to a concert and you're playing, and and the, you can just feel that the audience is. <laughs> I mean, you look out. There's been a couple times where we've looked out, and their people are just like, oh, yeah, you know, and it's it's, it's hilarious. It's demoralizing. It's but the truth is that like, you're playing for the the one person in the room who 
freaking loves it. Yeah. Right. You know, and that's what you hold on to when you just you don't want to get up there and play the the song that you've played ten million times. But it's about it's about other people. It's not so much about ourselves. You know, that's yeah. what that's what music is. And so I think that's that's what you got to keep in your head when you're playing to an audience that is not digging what right. you're doing. <laughs> so does does that affect really like who you guys go on tour with? Maybe because of the demographics, or are you guys still trying to? Just go on tour. I don't know if that affects it at this point. I think that we're we're probably still filling it out. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, the goal would be to not really have a demographic and, and be able to reach as many people as possible. Right. I don't think like selecting like, I only want to play for singer songwriter right. people, you know, yeah. like that would be a foolhardy move, you know. So it, I think knowing what isn't our demographic is like important, but it mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily mean we avoid that, you know. Okay. Now you guys have been on tour with other artists. Can we expect maybe you guys going on a headline tour for your album? Do you guys feel like it's it's time for uh, Fairground Saints to do so? You know what? I don't know. I, it, that's, yeah. that's a very hard question to answer. Um, I think we'd like to uh, maybe do a, a couple more tours where we're kind of doing promo underneath a, a bigger name for a while until we get really, really um, comfortable with the idea that you know we're going to go out there and, and fill some rooms in a really serious way. And I'm not sure that we're quite there yet, but... Um, Maybe within the next year, okay. I think so. Yeah. Now, as far as the record goes, how long do you guys feel a record uh, should be toured on before starting to work on a, a new one? Man, do you think it, it varies between artists. I think yeah, it varies, yeah. I mean, how how successful is your is your you know are your Spotify numbers? You know, like there's some guys that I've I scanned through there, I've never heard of them. They've got 23 million you know hit <laughs> streams, and those guys can go out with an acoustic guitar and 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 do something with it. But I I think that if you have great albums. I mean, you look at like Jackson Brown, he's still touring off of one of his like first records, right. you know? And so hopefully the answer is forever. Um, and you just keep making more records along the way. But, um, I think, I don't think you can put a number on it. Mm. Yeah. Now you guys did mention that you guys kind of had music enough for two albums when recording. Is that kind of music that we might expect to hear anytime soon? Or while you're on this tour, you guys are starting to write new stuff that you might not even put that music out because you've grown so much as an artist, as a writer, or just experiences, or you already have a record that's dropping tomorrow. I think we write <laughs> so, and, and I, I say this word, you know, and take it with a grain of salt because it sounds a little arrogant, but I think we write so prolifically just in the exact definition of the word that, you know, there's enough material being churned out that you can pick out the good ones. And, and I think even when you do pick out the good ones, you're still kind of moving past it at a certain point. But I think, you know, when we put out a record, we want, I wanted to put out a double record. And they were like, no, that's not going to happen. But, uh, <laughs> you know, which is really ambitious for a, 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 first, a first debut record. But, um, yeah, I, I, I think uh, we would love to put out a record right now. And I think the good news about that is when we do go to put out our next record, we'll have had time to weed through yeah. the ones that, that aren't working. What was it like working with Verb um, for that record, uh, the label, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, the funny thing is, we didn't we didn't actually um, so much work with with Verb for the record. We actually made the record or, or part of it before um, we signed a record deal, and they kind of, in a really cool way, signed us based on the music that they heard. Okay. Um, and so after that, we I think we wrote another like five songs or something just post signing six songs, yeah. and then uh, four of them made them on the album. Yeah. Oh. So David Foster came in and we had this kind of listening party sort of thing. And he was like, it's even better than the first one. So it was cool to hear that we're still progressing, you know, even at that time. That's awesome that they approved the songs you guys already had. Usually, like, yeah. you have to go in and start all over again, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It was a really yeah. cool experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome label. And have you guys been able to work with Foster as far as, like, him helping you guys produce something? Or is he strictly, like, a, a label exec for you guys? We've been able to work on a couple different projects with him, and he's just, he's been really kind and really yeah. awesome to us, and we feel like we're, like, close buddies with him, so yeah. he's definitely, he's not, like, just CEO man, like, yeah. he's hes really cool to his artists. And what's he like when, when you guys are working with him? Because he's, I mean, he's more in the classical sense uh, that a lot of people know of him. Obviously, he's worked with a lot of artists, but, you know, for me, like, I always think of Andrea Bocelli, for example. Mm. Um, so he's more in that kind of genre of music so what was it like working with him um with your style of music uh he's really tasteful i would say that like he is in the classical side but what i appreciate about appreciate about him is that he'll he will immediately throw an idea out if it's not working you know what i mean and that's that's kind of refreshing where he'll 
I remember he was playing something on the piano and like it was during like a Christmas thing. You were, uh, were doing a Christmas special thing mm -hmm. and he was immediately like, no, that's not working. <laughs> like, and it's like, yeah. it's nice to have that speed of like, he, yeah, just like, this isn't working. You know, isn't it's cool. It crazy how someone could just know like, like that. Yeah. Like, no, that's not going to go anywhere. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. And I think in the same way that it's really fun to work with everybody at, at Verve Records, um, he's, the more time you spend with him, there's the more fun it gets, you know, because everybody starts getting relaxed and then you start joking around and stuff right. like that. And he's, he's funny, man. Yeah. He's a funny guy. So it, it's been really cool working with him. Can we talk a little bit about track five still? Mm -hmm. um, can you elaborate on the track, what it really is? Yeah. Can I ask you why you picked that one? I don't know. You know what? I do this thing where uh, with artists where I look at their track listing and there's always something that sticks out. Mm -hmm. um, and for this one, it was still. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, still is about uh, it's, it. It was written. um kind of co-written and with a friend of mine and um it's a song about how after you get out of a relationship there's always that period of time where like i think it's like a week or so for me it has been you know where you're like i'm doing great everything's fine i don't need that person and then one night you wake up at three in the morning and that person's not there yeah. and you you can't help but miss them you know and it's that's kind of that's what the song is about and it's about like kind of this dream of like what it would be like to just get back together with them and and to kind of lie to each other just for a little bit more time and and you know try to try to get the the last kind of shreds of it out of your mind and and that's that's what the song's about awesome now is there a specific reason why you asked me why i chose that one um, is that one a bigger why did you ask song? Me why? yeah no, I just, why did <laughs> i we generally people don't ask that question and i always appreciate it in interviews when somebody asks something that i haven't really heard before you know and we don't typically get asked to explain exactly what our songs are about unless it's for something kind of non-interview related yeah. and uh so i just was i'm just curious to hear what people's ideas of something are having not known what it really is about initially right. so that's yeah. kind of why I, I asked you yeah but yeah your, your record is definitely one that i'm still trying to figure out which song i really like the most that's good <laughs> that's great that's, that's, so, that's the goal <laughs> you did it, you so it. yeah they, they got it Happy so community. you guys need to get that record but but yeah so it's like it's a good thing but a bad thing because then i can't really be like yo i really enjoyed the song because of this because I really like enjoy all of them. Yeah, yeah that's funny. So that's it's funny that it, it maybe it <laughs> suffers from being like good in the sense that all the songs are like uh, on a level that you enjoy. Right. You know, work on writing filler songs. <laughs> yeah. <just imagine. laughs>